Hey, what's up guys, welcome back to my channel. For today's video, I'm gonna take you through the whole process of drawing and coloring from start to finish. And for the sake of this tutorial, I'll be using Clip Studio Paint. Yeah, I can actually use whatever program you are comfy with. They are pretty much the same. So, let's get started. But before, we need to know what is drawing. To set the pace, you really need to know that drawing is turning a 2D shape, which in this case a circle, into a 3D one, which is a sphere, by directing a light source on it, so lights and shadows form. And that's how you make the illusion to the viewer that a 2D shape turned into a 3D one. And that's it. So this is the interface or the workspace you are going to see when you first f open up Clip Studio Paint. And as you see the action and the toolbar. So let's get rid of the things that you won't need as a beginner while drawing by dragging the panels out and closing them. And that would leave us with the subtool, tool property, color wheel, and the layers panel. So to open up a new canvas, you can use the short key control N, or you just go to the file, new, and the canvas is now opened. As you can see, there are some presets and templates that you can use with different sizes. Also, you can change units to pixels, centimeters, or whatever unit you're gonna be working with. Most of the time I start with 4000 pixels by 4000 pixels, with a resolution of 300 pixels per inch. And for the basic expression color, I use color since I'm going to color. If you're going to draw black and white, then choose gray. And there is also a monochrome if you're going to use only one color. I use a light gray sheet of paper, so it helps when I color. Now hit OK and here you go, a blank sheet. Automatically, it will open a new layer for you above the base layer. You can also hit the toggle button beside the layer to see or unsee what you already drawn on this layer. What I like about Clip Studio Paint is you can also choose a vector layer to draw on. Now hit the arrow in the upper right beside the color wheel and it will open some options. You only need the quick access bar. Drag and position to the place you want. It contains a quick access to some tools. I like the flipping one and the crop one also. Now all you need to do is choose an approach and start final result. Now create a new layer below the sketch layer, so we can fill the whole sketch with a color, which is the base color. There are so many ways to fill the sketch. The first one is to use the lasso tool, to trace the outer line of the sketch, and then fill it with any color using the fill tool or press ctrl plus backspace. Sometimes you need to refill some parts. The second one is to draw a borderline using a brush to surround the whole sketch. And then use the magic wand to select inside that border and then fill it with the color you want. But make sure not to leave any spaces between lines while drawing that border. So when you fill it, it won't go outside the board. The last one is to do it manually by using a brush to fill the inside of the sketch. To change the background color, hit double click on the base layer and 
choose the color you want and hit OK. You can work on the same layer to paint the parts of the sketch like hair, cloth and skin, but that will be working destructively. You can also click Ctrl and left click on the base layer to select the whole shape so the colors won't go outside of it. Another way, which is the best way, is to create a new layer above the base layer and clip it to it. That will guarantee that the colors won't go outside the sketch. And also you have separate layers that you can change later. Now after I filled the whole sketch with the colors, I'll start working on it one by one. I start with the skin by putting some blush, lipstick and some oranges on the ears and also some grayish blue for the white of the eye. Now to work on shadows, I'll create a new layer above the one that has the blush and stuff and change it to multiply using a desaturated warm color. The light source I chose is coming from the upper right. So before painting the shadows, you need to know the light basics first. So the shadows I'll be painting are form shadows which are the shadows occurred because of surfaces going away from light. Cast shadows, which are shadows occurred because of parts blowing the light to reach a certain area. And the ambient occlusion, which no light will reach these areas. You also need to take care of the hardness of edges, like soft and hard edges regarding how far and intense the light source is. I'll spread some reds all over her face to darken it a little bit and erase some parts to enhance the form and add some depth. For the hair, I pick its color and then shift the hue towards warm and more saturation to be in shadows. And it follows the same principles of light and shadow. Now add some patterns on the kimono she's wearing, change the blending option to your taste and again draw some shadows and same goes for gold, you just need to know how materials work under light. Add 
and some glow dodge through the shiny parts to make them even shinier. Then select the base color and create a multiply layer above all the layers and fill it with desaturated blue. Then erase some parts that light will hit. Also you can add some ring light. You can play with different blending options, adding sparkles and some other stuff. And that's it. So I hope you guys enjoyed the whole tutorial and good luck for all of you. See ya.